In the last episode, we began a discussion about what it takes to cultivate and protect a healthy culture in our ministries. So if you missed the Culture Club episode, you'll want to go back and watch that one before we continue with this conversation today. But if you've already watched that one, then let's get going. I don't know about you, but I'm not a huge fan of confrontation. My natural inclination would be to run away from a potential conflict rather than towards one. Perhaps it's because of my own insecurity. Perhaps it's because I don't like upsetting people. Or perhaps it's because I really want people to like me. I don't know, (laughs) whatever it is. My default would be to let a problem go and hope that it will resolve itself rather than to bring it up and address it. Unfortunately though, I've had to learn that this is poor, even dangerous leadership. One of the primary leadership lessons I've had to learn and I'm still learning now is how to engage in healthy conflict. So let me ask you a question. What are the things in your ministry that everybody knows is there, but nobody is talking about? These things are called the elephant in the room. It's a problem and everybody knows it, but no one is addressing it. And guess what? As the leader, it is your responsibility to shoot the elephant. What's more, the time that elapses between an issue arising and you addressing it is hugely significant because it is in that gap that your culture is established. Rewind the clock to November 2015, I took a bunch of students from Regents Theological College and launched out a new youth ministry in my hometown of Malvern. We had decided from the outset that because we were going to be starting from scratch and thus working with largely non-Christian young people, we needed to set a strong culture from the start, keeping in mind what we eventually wanted the youth ministry to become. Ultimately, of course, our prayer was that young people would come to faith and that meant they needed to be hearing about Jesus. Our chosen means for this was a section within the night that we called the comfy chair, which is essentially a a testimony slot with a jingle, uh, that would become the, the center point of the night. It was absolutely crucial, therefore, that the young people were fully attentive during this slot. And thankfully, uh, because of some great work from the team and the goodness of God, it started off that way. However, I remember a time where a couple of months in, One of our regular young people brought a friend with her and when it came to the comfy chair slot in the night and the testimony was being shared, this new girl turned and started chatting to her friend next to her. So what would you do in that situation? This girl was new and we were so glad that she was there. And of course we wanted her to come back again next week. So with that in mind, Would it have been best just to leave her to a conversation to ensure that she had a good and enjoyable night? Or should it be confronted at the risk of offending her and putting her off from coming again? I know what I would lean towards, and I certainly know which is the easy option. But the easy thing and the best thing are very rarely the same thing. Here's what happened. Almost immediately, one of our team who was sitting at their table, leaned over and gently asked them to stop talking. They did, and she came back again next week. And what's more, we didn't have any more issues with people talking during the comfy chair slot. Why? Because it is in the gap between a problem arising and it being addressed that your culture is established. Our team member that night understood the culture we were trying to set and because of the courage he showed in his willingness to confront the issue immediately, he protected and further established that culture. There is a direct correlation between confrontation and culture. And the level to which you are willing to confront issues is the level to which you will establish and protect your culture. This applies equally to your team. Sure, if you address an issue with a team member, you do have a chance of upsetting them, but leave it unaddressed and you have a chance of upsetting the entire team. 
I remember in the early days of, of, of establishing our youth club, one of our team members who is a fantastic leader and a phenomenal youth worker, just got into the habit of arriving a few minutes late to our team meetings. Everybody in the team knew it was happening, but no one was saying it. Elephant in the room. Now, let's be honest, it wasn't really that bad. It was like only a few minutes late. And perhaps if we had left it, he would have just started coming on time himself. But I knew that it's in the gap between a problem arising and it being addressed that your culture is established. And so, had I allowed that to continue without addressing it, I would have been unwittingly communicating to the whole team that in our culture, it is okay to show up late. And so I kind of rallied myself and fought against my inner desire to avoid a confrontation and asked him for a chat. Uh, we sat down, I explained that it's not okay to come late because it devalues the time of everyone else who is sat waiting in the room. I explained that we anticipated good punctuality on our team and that on the rare occasions where it's impossible to make it on time, we should make an apology on arrival. And guess what? He started showing up on time and on the rare occasions he did arrive late, he was quick to apologize. The culture was established. So let me say it again. As the leader, it's your responsibility to shoot the elephant. So to that end, let me share with you a few things that I've learned about how to shoot the elephant. Firstly, you've got to do it quickly. I've said it twice already, but I'm gonna say it again because it's really important. It's in the gap between a problem arising and it being addressed that your culture is established. So don't delay that conversation that you know you really need to have. Don't leave it for a month or a week, have it today. Secondly, you should probably usually address it privately. Unless the issue has to do with the entire group or the whole team, don't address it publicly. It will only humiliate the person that you're confronting and thus more likely lead to a breakdown in relationship rather than a change in behavior. Instead, sit down with them on a one-to-one -one basis so that a meaningful conversation can take place. And it goes without saying to keep your child protection protocol in mind if you're addressing a, a, a child or a young person, but you guys, you know that anyway. Thirdly, you need to do it gently. Confrontation doesn't have to mean conflict. So th this moment, this isn't a telling off. This isn't about you exerting your authority as the leader. So think carefully in that meeting about your tone of voice and your use of body language. Be gentle and open-handed rather than aggressive and, and, and finger pointing. It, it is possible to be both firm and gentle at the same time. Also, when you have that conversation, have it candidly. As much as it is important to be gentle, it's also important to be truthful. So don't, don't beat around the bush. If it's bad, you need to say it's bad. Don't water down the issue because you're worried about upsetting them. Because if you do, well, it's more likely to happen again. And make sure that you do it clearly. Be absolutely clear about what the problem is. Be absolutely clear about what needs to change and be absolutely clear about the consequences of repeated behavior. I'd even encourage you after you've had the conversation to make a mutually uh, agreed upon written record of the conversation to avoid any room for misunderstanding later on. I'm sure you've experienced that. You also need to have that conversation graciously any confrontation, even if it includes some kind of discipline, must be restorative rather than punitive. Our, our heart in addressing this issue is not to pull somebody down or make them feel guilty. It's to see them fulfill their potential and become all that they can be in God. So make sure that there's always a pathway for restoration available for them. Finally, you've got to do it encouragingly. There may be an issue, but it's very unlikely that it's all bad with that person. 
So this one-to-one -one is a great opportunity for you to encourage this person, to build them up, to affirm the person that you're talking to. Think before you meet them about some of the wonderful qualities and contributions of this individual and be sure that they leave the meeting with those things ringing in their ears. So let's recap. It is in the gap between a problem arising and a problem being addressed that your culture is established. And it is your responsibility as the leader to identify and call out the elephants in the room. But when you do so, do it quickly, privately, gently, candidly, clearly, and graciously. Have the courage to say what needs to be said. Have the courage to shoot the elephant. And on the theme of saying what needs to be said, I want to say thank you for all that you're doing to invest in the lives of children and young people. I cannot conceive of anything more important that you could give your life to than passing on the gospel to the next generation. So please keep going. Do not give up because what you are doing is important. <music>